Hello there, I'm Graham Garden. And I'm Tim Brooke Taylor. And welcome to a brand new quiz show, Beat the Nation. A leading polling organisation has asked every question in this show to over a thousand people right across Britain, from Land's End to John O'Groats. And our contestant scores will depend on just how well or how badly the nation has done. For example, our pollsters asked the nation, who designed St Paul's Cathedral in London? The answer is that great 17th century architect, Sir Christopher Wren, and our poll reveals that just 22% of the nation knew the answer. So if one of our contestants got that right, they'd have beaten 78% of the nation and scored 78 points. Quite simply, the more you beat, the more you score. And if our contestants beat the nation, they'll be battling it out in our £25,000 grand final at the end of the series. So let's find out who's hoping to score those points on our very first show, Tim. First up is Adam Evans. He's an economics student from Jesmond in Newcastle. Economics, how long have you been doing that, Adam? Um, about three years now. And what do economics students do for fun? Um, same as my students, go out and drink. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you're studying uh, in the north. Do you come from the north? No, I come from London. Oh, cool. You're in good company here. Next to Adam is Frosso Miltiado, a recruitment consultant from Brixton in London. But Frosso, you, you qualified as a barrister. Yes, I did. So why did you move away? Um, I suppose the bar's a bit of a, a fuddy-duddy kind of place to be, so I just thought it wasn't for me. Fair enough. Uh, next to Frosso is Rodney Jack, an architect from Romford in Essex. Any particular type of architect, Rodney? Postmodern, classical, anything. It all rings my bell, really. And, and brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Gather you met a very famous actor. I have. Who's that? Yeah, Ian McKellen. Really? Yeah. Um, I, was, I saw him eating lunch in a, in a, in a cafe, yeah. and I went over to him and said, hello, Gandalf, and um, <laughs> congratulated him on his choice of pasta for lunch. <laughs> Basically, that was it, and went away embarrassed. Gandalf sounds like he should go with Frosso, who's next yeah. door to you. <laughs> next to Rodney is Jennifer Sagala. She's an electronic dictionary editor from Walthamstow in London. It may be what it sounds like, but an electronic dictionary editor, you don't get many of those to the pound. What do no, you do? Th there aren't very many of us. Um, basically, I am an editor for dictionaries that are on CD-ROM or on the web. Um, so that involves everything from choosing illustrations to go with particular entries, checking spelling, typos, making sure things fit on the page the way they're meant to. I'm sort of a catch-all kind of thing. I have to say I'm very grateful to you people. I suddenly know a lot more when I go on the web. Graham, those are our splendid contestants. And what a highly qualified group they are too. But can any of them beat the nation today? Let's find out. Our round one features questions that most people in Britain don't know the answer to. Our polling tells us that less than half of the nation can answer the following questions. But can our contestants? And can you at home? Let's find out. Now, contestants, whichever one of you fails to reach 150 points will, unfortunately, be leaving early. So, stand by with those delightful, pristine buzzers, please, because here come the questions. Who wrote the novel The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Jennifer? Robert Louis Stevenson. Yes, he did. Only 13% of the nation got that right, so very well done if you got that right at home. But more importantly, 87% got it wrong. So, Jennifer, you start with a very splendid 87 points. Well done. The Sears Tower skyscraper, Adam. Chicago is in which American city? Chicago, yes. 15% knew that, 85% didn't, so you get 85 points. Good start for Adam as well. Adam just needs 65 to go through, Jennifer needs 63, Frosso and Rodney still to score. In the TV comedy series Birds of a Feather, where in Essex did Tracy... Frosso? Chigwell. Chigwell is where Tracy had her Neo-Georgian house. Frosso, you get 66 points for that, as 66% of the nation got it wrong. Welcome to the game. OK, Frosso needs 84, Adam needs 65, Jennifer needs 63, Rodney needs 150. Fingers on buzzers. Which London street connects Piccadilly Circus to Oxford Circus? Rodney. Uh, Regent Street. Regent Street is right. And that's worth 83 points. Very good start, Rodney. Needing 67, so it's pretty level at the moment. With which club did Bobby Moore end his... Rodney. Fulham. He ended his playing career in England with Fulham, yes. Good interruption there, Rodney. You need 67, and that's worth 94, so you're well and truly into the next round. Well done. <laughs> so Rodney has suddenly leapt ahead of the field into the next round. Jennifer needs 63, Frosso 84, Adam 65. Mrs Darrell Waters of Green Hedges, a famous writer of children's books, was better known by what... Ne Adam. Um, no, J.K. Rowling. No, that's not the answer. Jennifer. Beatrix Potter. It was not Beatrix Potter. 
Frosso. Enid Blyton. It was Enid Blyton. Uh, Frosso, you need 84 points, and that's worth 84, so you go through to the next round. <laughs> Very accurate, for sure. So Adam needing 65, plays Jennifer needing 63 for a place in the next round. Fritz Chrysler was a virtuoso on which musical instrument? Jennifer. Violin. Violin is right. You need 63, Jennifer, and that's worth 95, so you certainly go through to the next round. So after a very hard-fought battle there, Jennifer, Rodney and Frosso go through to the next round. Adam's still on 85, I'm afraid we part company, we don't see you in the next round. But thanks to Tim's generosity, I hope you'll be going home with a, a little financial sweetener. Yes, I hope so. He's a good buzzer, Adam, I noticed. Uh, you <laughs> yes. can still go home with £100 if you can predict just how clever the nation is. Listen to the following question. In the rainbow, which colour comes between yellow and blue? Would you happen to know, Adam? Doesn't matter if you do or not. No. <laughs> well, the answer is, in fact, green. But what percentage of the nation do you think knew the answer. If you can guess to within 10% either way, I'll happily hand over £100. So what percentage of the nation do you reckon? Um, 30%. 30%. OK, so you've got between 20 and 40% is a margin error. What percentage of the nation knew this? And make it between those two for Adam, please. What percentage of the nation knew that? Oh, absolutely spot on. <laughs> <laughs> Miraculous powers he has. Got him. I'm very happy to say that 30% actually got that, and you get £100. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, it's goodbye to Adam, leaving us with Frosso, Rodney and Jennifer. And now it's round two. Just six questions here. These questions have been asked to over a 1,000 people right across Britain, but they've also been asked to a special guest. Our contestants will score points for correct answers, but they could double those points if they can work out whether our guest knows the answer or not. So, Tim, who's joining us on our very first show? Well, to start the series off, we have Professor Emeritus at Cambridge University, a specialist in organic chemistry, Professor Ian Fleming. Welcome, sir. So, contestants, place your fingers over those scientific and very organic buzzers, because here comes the first of your six questions. Published in 1953, Casino Royale was the first... Rodney. James Bond. Was the first novel to feature which secret agent? James Bond is right. A very shrewd buzzer in, Rodney. You get 65 points there, but to double, you've got to decide whether Professor Ian Fleming would know. No. No. Professor, did you or didn't you know? Which secret agent in Casino Royale? Well, of course, with my name, I'm likely to have noticed his arrival in 1953, and, of course, it's James Bond. Right. Wrong decision there, but you still get 65, you just don't double. Who in Greek legend led the Argonauts in search of the... Jennifer. Jason. In search of the Golden Fleece, it was Jason. And Jennifer, you get 24 for that, but to double, you've got to decide whether the Professor gets this right or not. Yeah, I think you will. OK, Professor, do you? The leader of the Argonauts for the Golden Fleece was Jason. Absolutely right to go with him, you double to 48. Brilliant. OK, only Frosso still has to score. Question three. In cricket, how many runs are scored if a batsman... <laughs> Rodney. Four. No. How many runs are scored if a batsman hits a ball over the boundary without it touching the ground? Jennifer. Eight. Not Very eight. Well. Prosso. Um, three. Not three. Well, let's see if the professor knows the answer to this. What is the score for a ball that flies over the boundary without touching the ground? Goodness, I'm surprised I know the answer to that. Six. And he's absolutely right, and you could have doubled to 102. Rodney, a little bit eager on the buzzer there, I think. 